What's up guys, Ryan with Jedi Patrol back with another video. It's been like two weeks since I've even turned on a camera. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but uh, today we're gonna be unboxing and uh, checking out the new Hot Toys Iron Patriot. Let's see if it's any good. Roll the intro. That's right guys, we're back. Uh, it has been a couple weeks. Uh, for those wondering where the hell I've been, uh, if you're in the Facebook group, you probably already know, but I have had the lovely opportunity to have the COVID and it was all it was cracked up to be. And uh, quite frankly, it just kind of sucked uh, for the past two weeks. So um, I haven't really done much of anything other than have a fever and cough and be miserable and not get much sleep. So that's been that. Uh, it it would have been very nice if I could just say, hey, I just slept for like uh, eight or 10 days or whatever and just I just slept through it. But unfortunately, that's that's not what actually happened. Um, so uh, for all those who did reach out to me to check on me, uh, thank you. I'm alive. I hope I sound decent. I feel I feel pretty good right now. Um, but I will tell you, it was bumpy and miserable. And um, I don't really recommend it for anybody to have the COVID. Uh, so there's that. So if you can avoid it, avoid it. I would do that. Um, but we're back. Um, I do have uh, I do have a lot of stuff that's piled up over the last couple weeks. Um, one of which being, for those who are interested, the um, Jazz Inc. diorama uh, piece that I got in uh, that came with the wrong parts. I uh, actually reached out to Yoast and he was amazing. And I have a full follow-up video on that uh, to uh, give you guys very soon. So I actually, he actually got me the right parts like the next day, uh, but then I got sick. So I haven't really messed with it. It's still sitting in a box um, some somewhere in here. I don't know. Uh, I've got some quarter scale pieces in. I've got some other six scale pieces in, uh, but today we're going to be taking a look at the iron Patriot. And I'm actually pretty excited about this. This is something that we've all been anticipating and wanting for a very long time. It's finally here. And we're going to see, you know, does this figure match our expectations? Is it not? Uh, and which one's like the best war machine? Like that's kind of what I'm curious about to see what's going on with this. So if you are happy to be back, you'd be happy to see me again. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And um, I actually got those for those wondering. I got mine from Pop Collectibles. I'll put a link in the description below. They're in stock now. Uh, so very thankful for them to uh, send this over as quickly as they did. And uh, I'm thankful to feel as good as I do so I can actually make this video. So let's just uh, let's just get into it. So let's take a look at the box. We've got a couple things going on here. Obviously, we've got our Iron Patriot looking here. It's it's a it's a very um, a muted box art. It's it's muted. It, it's not like very vibrant in color. Uh, which is kind of interesting because the whole figure itself is quite colorful, but the, the box art's not very uh, colorful. Uh, but it's all right. I mean, it's fine. You can see you got some nice little sheen as the light's bouncing off of it like that. Uh, we've got our Iron Patriot going on there at the bottom die cast. One of the things I noticed when I when I first opened this thing up was that it, it was not as, the box was not very large. It's pretty much the same size as any other Iron Man box that we've seen in the past. So I was a little shocked by that. You got a nice little War Machine stuff going on there. Um, Avengers on the bottom, Iron Patriot there on top. It's um, not, there's not a whole lot of size. Like it's not very big, uh, which is kind of shocking to me actually. But I do have the figure here. I've got, uh, I've been messing around with it just for a few. And um, my first impressions of it were it's, it's, it's not as it's not as it's not as large as I thought it was going to be. And everybody's going to say, well, that's what she said. I get it. I understand. Um, but it re it's really not as large. I, I thought it would be larger. I really did thought uh, think it, would, it was going to be larger uh, than it actually ended up being. And I don't know if that's good or bad. It's just it's just how my thought process when I got it. We all saw the photos of this thing. We saw like Rocket um, hanging out on the side of it. And he's got a bunch of weapons and stuff on here, which we'll take a look at. But um, just size-wise, like the figure itself, I thought it would be larger. Um, so that was my first impressions of it, uh, was just like, there's that. What are your thoughts on this thing? Like, I, I think color-wise, 
I think it looks very good. It, it's very nice. It's got a pile of accessories. In fact, I've got so many of them here. I've got like this giant diorama base, which is probably larger than it really needs to be. Like it's, this could get away with just a normal six scale Iron Man base. I, I don't, this is, I think this is a bit overkill. Uh, for what it is, but there it is. You can see it's got the Avengers logo, War Machine, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's This is kind of cheap, but we've been seeing that for a while. I don't know if that's really anything special. Um, it doesn't even come with, excuse me, it doesn't even come with uh, like a dynamic flight stand. It's got this metal rod and like a little grabber thing. Um, I, I just think this right here, this was kind of a letdown. I don't know that, this, like this is way too big. So like, this is not big enough, my opinion, a and this is too big. I don't, I don't know how you reconcile those two together, um, but uh, it is what it is. So there, we got a base, whatever. I mean, it's got a lot of stuff though. I mean, let me get all these accessories out here. It's got a lot of stuff. And some of the stuff I've actually already put on the figure um, just because I wanted to see what the heck it was about. But we, we got a lot of parts. It's like a lot of moving pieces here, including some ones that are, I've already got here on the back. Uh, which are back here. So these like uh, these are magnetic. These little uh, weapon pods here. These are magnetic. Uh, you got this gun section that's magnetic. That comes off. And then there's another section back here that's magnetic. And um, you got all these like little uh, flaps and stuff going on back here, which is um, pretty nice to be able to store all this stuff in there. Um, there's just like so there's so many pieces. Uh, which is not not a bad thing, but there it is. This is what I'm talking about. So the uh, all those little magnetic parts go down into these little gullies, I guess, if you will, uh, on the back of the figure. And uh, that's kind of where they all go. So they just kind of just like, boom, they just magnetize right in there. And then you've got one of these pieces. Uh, it magnetizes right there. You got another piece uh, that goes uh, something like that. Anyways. They go a specific way. I think that's the way it goes. Okay, so there you go. And it almost looks like uh, like a jetpack. It almost looks like like this is like a jetpack, but it's not really. It's actually just like the weapons uh, missile pod, uh, which is kind of a cool thing. But the, you know, it's a lot of a lot of stuff going on there, which is uh, it's just pretty nice. So that being said. There's a couple things that uh, when I was messing around with this, uh, I thought were pretty interesting. One being the uh, the head sculpt for Don Cheadle. This is really good. This is a really, really good head sculpt. Uh, I quite like it uh, very much. And I'm tempted to use it uh, on some other figures and we'll, maybe we'll see how those look on some other uh, War Machine figures, but it's quite good. Honestly, it really is. Uh, the paint applications are good. The likeness I think is good. The sculpt, I just, uh, the expression I think works. Uh, I think they did a really good job with this. One of the, one of the, one of the kit bashes, I guess I would like to do with this, it was I'd like to have him in his Air Force uniform, uh, just as a, a third, you know, a kit bash figure. Uh, so if anybody out there knows of a particularly good suit that would go with this, I would love that information. You can leave me in the comment section down below. Uh, but I would like to have like all the War Machine suits and then him in his like Air Force uniform. I think that would be pretty pretty, uh, pretty sick. I haven't um, been too successful at finding one just yet, uh, but I would like one that's not like super baggy. You know, you don't want, you don't want a military uniform that's baggy. You want one that's tight fitted the way it's supposed to be. Um, but I think this is exceptional. Uh, I ha actually have the Mark VI, I think. I think this is the Mark VI. Uh, right here because I just uh, unboxed it not too long ago, and you can see like the the uh, the comparisons between the two. They're both good. I, I really think they did a fine job on either one of them, but it's finally nice to have a, an actual full unhelmeted uh, Cheetle head sculpt. So I guess you could also do um, Basher from uh, Ocean's movies, right? So Ocean's Eleven and Twelve. Uh, I guess you can do Basher as well, but uh, I think it probably makes more sense to get him in like an Air Force uniform. I think that'd be, you know, pretty neat. 
Um, but I'm happy to get that. that. That's a pretty cool piece. Uh, as far as the other accessories we got, like I said, we got a bunch. We got some hands. Uh, you know, it's got hands. They're they're oversized. You get like the repulsor hand uh, that we've seen, you know, time and time again. This piece right here is quite large, which makes sense for the figure itself. Um, but you get the, um, you know, the repulsor hands, and then you get the uh, the normal articulated hands, which we've seen with every other Iron Man figure. Uh, with a little light up feature in there, which is nice. Uh, and then we get some fisted hands that are actually on the figure. So that's cool, that's fine. Uh, we'll get a nice little neck collar piece that goes for the uh, the portrait or the head sculpt. Um, and, and that's okay. I would have liked to have one of these to go with the Mark VI or even, yeah, I think the Mark VI. Uh, so maybe another neck collar that we could use to go on the Mark VI so there's not a gap in there, I don't know. But, you know, that's fine. Nitpicky? I don't know. Maybe it is. Uh, but you get all these, like, different weapons and stuff that I'll throw on the on the figure. Uh, thankfully, they are labeled, which is kind of nice. So there, there's an R, uh, R1 over there. There's an L4 uh, going on over here. So these are labeled so you know which sides they're supposed to go on. These are all just little weapons and stuff that uh, the figure comes with. Comes with quite a lot, honestly. Um, so... And I don't even know what this piece is. This is something that pegs into the back of the figure. Um, on the figure itself, I guess I get some of this stuff out of here. Um, comes with a lot of stuff. The figure itself is, you get some of this stuff off so I don't, you know, just drop it and make a big mess. Uh, the one thing, I will tell you this, let me tell you this. There's not that many battery compartments. There's one for the head, for the light-up feature for the head, uh, there's one for the arc reactor uh, back here, and then there's one on each hand, and that's it. Wasn't too terrible to put the batteries in, so I will pro I've already done it, so I will turn the lights off and we'll check out the battery function. Uh, maybe when we're posing and we'll kind of figure that out. Um, but I, I, I think one of the, the first impressions I got out of this was like the head scope. I was thinking like Transformers. That's Maybe it's because when I was uh, knocked out, I watched a lot of Transformer movies, but this, uh, the head sculpt, the helmet it helps head sculpt. The first thing I thought when I saw this was Transformers because of these little like uh, jowls like he's got going on right here on each side. It just kind of made me look, uh, think of Transformers like Megatron or, or uh, maybe I guess Optimus since he was, you know, red, white, blue. Um, but that's kind of what I was initially thinking uh, when I was first messing around with this thing was I was like, hey, that's, that's kind of cool. But um, pretty good range of motion on, on most of this stuff. Uh, you've got these giant, and I do mean giant, uh, shoulder pieces here that you can move out of the way and then you can do whatever you want with the arms. Typical Iron Man hands, arms, shoulders. You know, you can you can pull the, that socket out uh, and you can punch it in. You can pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, swivel there at the, at, the, uh, at the bicep, double bend on the, on the elbow. Even though it's not a great double bend, because you got all this uh, like extra pieces there, they're gonna get in the way. Um, but the bicep piece does move out of the way, almost like the Mark 50 uh, did, and of course the Neon Tech uh, 4.0 did the same thing. Or well, that bicep uh, piece just kind of gets gets out of the way, uh, which is kind of nice. But there are some nice touches here, like on the back where it says uh, actually says danger uh, right in there. I think that's a pretty cool touch. Uh, these little pieces actually pop out so you can add some other parts on there. Uh, we've got danger going on here. And just look at the difference in, in paint applications where we've got this blue, this little flap here that you can move out of the way. Uh, you've got a flap back here you can kind of maneuver a, a little bit. But the contrast between the red and the silver and the blue actually look really, really good. So I, I quite like those things. And I love these hoses, like the belt feed feed for the uh, for the rail gun. Uh, I think those are a nice touch as well. So big fan of that. Uh, and you can like see all these little pistons and stuff. I mean, they, these aren't actual movable parts, but you can you can picture them moving as uh, as this guy's, you know, uh, walking around. So I think they did a, a fine job with this thing. Um, on the shelf, you know, just my first thoughts on this thing is the War Machine Mark I still wins. Uh, 
it's just so it might maybe it's the the paint scheme on this thing where I would have liked to have seen, and I think I don't think I'm alone. I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen this with the uh, the black and the gray and the dark color, the, the war machine colors, right? Instead of the Iron Patriot colors, I think they would have liked to have seen that. Um, it's a good looking figure in person. If you wanted to pick this up, I, I think it would be a good call. Uh, if you like collecting these, you know, giant armors. Um, but the, that war machine Mark One, and I'll most likely bring it out here. We can kind of take a look at it together. Uh, I think those two together. Uh, I, I think the War Machine Mark One wins, which is good because they're reissuing that one and you have an opportunity to get that one, um, which I think is actually less expensive than this. But so there's that. Uh, as far as like, you know, what it'll do movement wise, um, you know, it has a drop down on the legs, just like any other um, uh, any other Iron Man figure. It's got a drop down there so you can pretty much, you know, get it, get them going out pretty good ways. Double bend on the knee. Um, pretty good ratchet. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, pretty good ratchet there. And then there's a, a, an actual decent amount of movement um, on these feet. It's actually quite, quite good. Uh, so you can you can move this foot around a pretty good bit. You can see like that, that rotation there. Um, and then on the foot, the actual uh, toe section here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, look at all the little movement you got going on. It's it's pretty crazy. It's almost like little chicken feet. It's almost like little chicken feet. Uh, so they did a fine job there. And then, of course, there's the bottom for those who might be interested in that. You know, um, what for me, what what the, the main thing in here, let me pop that back. Um, the main thing for me is like, what is it going to look like on the shelf and how is it going to display? And, and um, that's kind of what I, I, I'm more interested in more than the... Uh, really more than anything else, honestly. Um, it does have a, an ab extension for those, so you can get a little bit more range of motion out of here. Uh, you can extend the, the torso there and get a little bit more range of motion. Um, but uh, for me, it's like, what kind of crazy poses or, or what will it do? Um, and how will it look on the shelf? So I'm gonna throw a bunch of weapons on here and see what the heck that looks like. So I went ahead and got the Mark One War Machine out and the Mark Six uh, War Machine from Endgame, so you guys can see these just kind of uh, lined up together. The Iron Patriot, the new one, so many weapons, so much shelf presence, it, it, it is quite fantastic. So I would, you know, just I, I would recommend it honestly. Uh, I want to just kind of give you a close up on some of these things. The amount of tech and engineering gone in to put this thing together is amazing it really is and to have yours all kitted out like the one that i do here where i've got all the weapons on the forearms on both forearms i've got the uh, missile pods open up on the top i've got the rail gun on the top i mean everything about this thing screams like a, a war machine figure and it is huge with all that stuff on there scale wise as far as the body goes not a whole lot different from the mark six it's really not that much different. It's got some extra, you know, armor plating on there um, that's pretty obvious. But as far as scale wise, like those two together, they're very, very similar in, in scale. And height wise, uh, they're pretty much the same. Even though I've got one of them, uh, the legs are a little bit extended on uh, the Iron Patriot. Um, but height wise, they're about the same. Uh, width wise, honestly, they're about the same if you take away like the crazy weaponry. Um, the Mark VI War Machine has very, very broad shoulders, uh, and he looks menacing. It is a good, good figure. If you can pick that one up for a decent price, I would definitely recommend it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't skip that one. Um, but if you put it together next to the Mark I War Machine, uh, the Mark I, I think what it's got going for it is the classic War Machine colors plus the weaponry. Uh, so if the Iron Patriot had the classic War Machine colors, it would be hands down my favorite war machine uh, out of the entire you know set. That being said, uh, Mark One definitely wins for me, uh, and I'm glad that a lot of people are going to have the uh, opportunity to pick that one up on the reissue. Um, so don't miss that one. It's a great figure. Um, but going down just the uh, the Iron Patriot, you know, one one little time here, just checking out all the weaponry. Uh, I think this is just very cool. The feet are really strange. I, I'm, I, they kind of look like chicken feet or duck feet. 
Um, there's not like there's not a whole lot of uh, they don't look like feet. They're they're kind of strange. <laughs> they're kinda, I don't know. It, it might be it's just me, uh, but they look a little strange to me. But that's purely a design aspect uh, for that. As far as the weaponry on the forearms. Uh, there's a lot going on there. And like I said, you're going to check the instructions, make sure you get all those pieces put together. Uh, I didn't really run into any range of motion uh, when trying to pose this guy. So I don't really have any issues with that. Uh, just take your time, just like you would any other six scale figure. I think you'd be just fine. Um, but I, you know, would I recommend it? I think so. I think it's a good figure. Um, I think it's a lot of fun to mess around with. It's not one you're going to pose a whole lot simply because you're going to get him in a pose that you like with all the weaponry and you're going to put him on a shelf and, and you're going to pose him and he's going to look awesome. And that's where it's going to be. This is not one. Uh, this is not your Spider-Man figure uh, where you're going to you know, change it often and have fun with it. That, that kind of thing. This is something that's going to look badass on the shelf and I think you're going to like it. So, um, but we'll, we'll do a couple more poses. Let's see what we can come up with. And, um, you know, maybe we'll swap out the head. I knew somebody would want to see the Don Cheadle head sculpt on the actual figure. So I went and swapped those out. I think if you're going to put the head sculpt on the figure, I think removing the weaponry uh, makes sense. Otherwise, it's just super distracting. And um, it honestly doesn't make a whole lot of sense why you'd have all those weapons up and then not his helmet on. So I, I think this makes more sense on a, a, for display purposes. I think it makes sense. Um, but I think the portrait looks good. Uh, I think scale wise, I think it's fine. I don't really have an issue with it uh, at all. I do wish we had like a, a separate neck collar to go with the Mark VI, kind of like what they did uh, with maybe like the, the previous Spider-Man figures where we got like some swap out parts from between different figures. Um, but I, I think it looks fine. Uh, I don't know too many people that are going to display their, you know, their 400 some odd dollar uh, War Machine figure with the head sculpt on it, but you might. You might decide to do that, and that's fine. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, I think uh, I, I'm going to try and just build me like a Kitbash uh, Air Force uh, roadie. So I don't know if I'll be able to do that anytime soon, but I'm going to try. But uh, there's what it looks like with the head sculpt on there, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. All right, so I went ahead and threw, uh, you know, all the weapons and everything back on this guy, and I put him on my favorite diorama base of 2021, the... Uh, Battle Damage Thanos base because I just think it looks awesome. And, um, you know, I had the light features on. They're okay. They're not amazing. They're they're fine. They're, again, not one I would... I don't know. I, I, I'm rarely impressed by the light features uh, on Iron Man figures, but um, they do look... They're okay. Um, I think if you're going to have this piece in your collection, um, I think you'd be happy. I think, I think this is something you'd definitely be pleased to have. Uh, I mean, you can just take a look at all the uh, the weaponry and the, and the gadgets and details and the coloring on this guy. I think uh, I think you'd be very pleased uh, to have this in your collection. So, and I am. I'm glad to have it in mind. I think posability. I think it's fine. I don't really have any issues with it. Um, I think the range of motion is fine. I think the uh, paint applications are good. And so, you know, is it's going to be one of my like standout figures of the year? Yeah, I mean, probably not. Probably, probably not. Um, you know, I'm just thinking back to some other figures that that really blew me away, like uh, Mysterio. Uh, I think Mysterio was a uh, a beautiful figure. Um, so, and the upgraded suit Spider-Man, that's a beautiful figure. Five hundred first Deluxe Clone Troopers. Those are amazing. So, we've had a lot of very very good figures this year. Uh, this is definitely a very good figure. Uh, only time will tell whether or not where it's going to end up ranking for me uh, for the 2021. But I'm finally glad it's uh, released so we can kind of move on to the next thing. Maybe eventually close the chapter on Endgame. Maybe we'll get our Captain Marvel and our Battle Damage uh, Mark 85. That would be amazing. Maybe, you know, whatever else is floating out there for the um, for Endgame. But um, I'm happy to have this in collection. So love to hear your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this one you're going to be picking up? Is this one you're skipping? Uh, are you going to like play the long game and say, hey, look, you know, maybe it'll be on discount somewhere and, you know, I'll get it later down the road. Um, I think this eventually when this one does actually sell out, this is going to be one of those pieces that is just so different enough. And so um, 
uh, off the wall as far as colors and weaponry and that, that kind of stuff size wise. This is going to be one of those that people are going to be going, oh, man, I wish I had or, you know, I'm sorry I skipped it at retail. I think this is going to be one of those figures. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, but, um, you know, for right now, I think it's a pretty cool figure. So, uh, guys, thanks for all the support. Thanks for checking on me. If you want to get one of these for yourself, check out Pop Collectibles, discount code PATROL uh, in, this, in the uh, description below. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming up on our channel. So, as always, click what you like. See you next time.